Why Eliza Taylor never auditioned for the role of Clark? What makes The 100 the darkest TV show ever? What's the reason for expecting Bell Arc to come true in Season 7 of The 100? And what do we know about the prequel series? Hi, I'm Dylan, and here are the details that make The 100 such a hugely compelling show. Sad Truth About Season 7 The show was already in its seventh season, and it's going to be the last one. When the showrunner Jason Rothenberg confirmed the news last August, he called it bittersweet. It's not simply bitter, because the creators of the show have the luxury of wrapping up the show on their own terms. And as the icing on the cake, together with the 16-episode final season, the series will have 100 episodes in total, which is quite symbolic. The series is loosely based on the books. The person who gave us the start of this tremendous six-year run is Cass Morgan, the author of The 100 Book Series. But if you want to find out how the show will end by reading her novels, you'll be disappointed. The publishers actually pitched the idea of the novel to their partner studio as a potential pilot prior to the first book's release. Morgan was writing it parallel to producer Jason Rothenberg creating the pilot. So beyond the premise of space delinquents, there are not many other correlations between the two. A bit later, I'll tell you about some of these differences. Familiar Filming Locations The 100 is filmed at numerous locations across Canada, including the extensive forests in British Columbia, the gloomy tunnels of old copper mines, and even downtown Vancouver. By the way, if you ever thought that some places from the world of The 100 look familiar, it might very well turn out to be true. Many other shows, like The Riverdale and The Flash, are also filmed in Canada. So it's no wonder that there are many Canadian actors in The 100. Marie Avdaropoulos, Richard Harmon, and Devin Bostic are all Canadian. However, Eliza Taylor, Alicia Debnam Carey, and Bob Morley are from Australia. Some characters are not that young. Many characters in the series are older than their prototypes from the book. For example, Octavia was only 14 in the first book and 17 at the start of the show, the youngest of all the teens. But in real life, Marie Avdaropoulos was much older than both of them. I bet you'll never guess, because I didn't. The actress was 28 at the time of her casting. Wells should not have died. As I've told you before, there are many characters and plotlines in the series that are different to the novel. For one, Finn and Raven don't exist in the books, nor do Lincoln, Jasper, or Murphy. And Wells wasn't killed. He's one of the main characters in the novels, and his point of view is important for the entire story. Moreover, he and Bellamy are half-brothers and close friends. Also in the books, Wells and Clark dated for a while, but Wells' best friend, Glass Sorensen, didn't make it to the TV series at all. Raven's storyline was different. You already know that Raven's character was created for the TV version of The 100, and it turns out that her storyline has been changed several times. At first, she was going to be Finn's mother, but the writers decided to create a character that would be reminiscent of Glass to some extent, and that's how a romance between Finn and Raven came into being. However, in the original script, Raven wasn't going to survive season one because she was a complication to Clark and Finn's relationship. But eventually, the producers decided against this, and Lindsay Morgan returned to season two as a series regular and a fan favorite. Keep on watching to learn about the other popular characters who exist only in the series. Jasper is actually a super survivor. Another character who wasn't originally meant to survive the first season was Jasper. In fact, he was supposed to be killed off in the pilot. Fortunately, the crew loved both the character and Devin Bostic, so he remained on the show until Jasper met his tragic end in season four. And again, this could have happened much earlier, namely in the finale of season three. But even for such a dark show like The 100, that would have been too much. So the writers changed their minds and brought Jasper back for one more season. Devin described it as a victory lap season, in the sense that Jasper decided to spend his final days enjoying life, rather than waiting for death. Surprising sci-fi influence You might remember that Bellamy named his little sister Octavia after the Roman Emperor Augustus' sister, Octavia the Younger. But what you probably don't know is that Cass Morgan took names for many of her characters from notable science fiction writers. And that includes the characters from The 100. Clark is named after Arthur C. Clarke, Bellamy after Edward Bellamy, Wells after H.G. Wells, and Octavia was named after Octavia E. Butler. 
And the other characters, whose names aren't derived from sci-fi authors, were definitely created for the series and are not present in the Source novel. Murphy could be Bellamy? Many of our favorite characters could have looked very different, because other actors nearly portrayed them. For example, Richard Harmon initially read for the role of Bellamy Blake. When Bob Morley was picked instead, Harmon went on to audition for another complex character, John Murphy. And although we can't imagine anybody else but Zach McGowan playing Roan, it turns out that Jordan Wisely, best known for starring in MTV's reality television series The Real World, auditioned for the very same role. We don't know how the producers make their decisions, but we're grateful for their wise choice. No audition required. Some actors are lucky to get a role without fighting for it, and Eliza Taylor is one of them. The actress revealed in an interview that she didn't actually audition for the role of Clark. At the time of casting, Eliza had been living in Los Angeles for about a month, and her credit card was stolen, so she was ready to go back to Australia. Fortunately, the producers of The Hundred looked at an audition tape Taylor had done months ago for another film, and they asked her to come for a reading the next day. A little while later, she was on a plane to Vancouver to shoot the pilot. Going back to sci-fi roots. During its five-season run, the characters' development and their storylines and romances began to overshadow the sci-fi element. But in season six, the show returned to its roots. Jason Rothenberg invited new writers to bring in a fresh set of minds because he wanted to tell a completely new story from that moment on. The darkest TV show ever? The Hundred is one of the darkest and most challenging TV shows. The showrunner Jason Rothenberg revealed that he never felt pushback from the network on The Hundred's themes, and he was actually allowed to go even darker. But it was never violence just for the sake of violence. I try to come up with scenarios that are hard in terms of the choice that a character has to make. And when it happens, people die, because, as a rule, there is no good choice. Just think about it. Throughout the six seasons of The Hundred, Clark is responsible for 924 deaths in total, including direct and indirect kills. Lexa exists only in the series. The ruthless Commander Lexa quickly became a fan favorite, and her romance with Clark drew an additional interest to the show. It turns out, just like Raven, Lexa was created exclusively for the show. In the original script, she was named Rosalind, but it was later changed to Lexa, which derives from Alexandria, a city in Virginia. Why was Alexa actually killed off? Lexa was supposed to be just a one-off role for Alicia Debnam Carey, and she soon became a member of the Fear the Walking Dead cast. So it came as a surprise to her when she was offered to return in Season 3 of The 100 as a recurring character. And while Alicia wanted to come back for Season 4 as well, Unfortunately, her series regular role on Fear the Walking Dead meant that she couldn't commit to an extended arc on The Hundred. So the writers of the show decided to kill Lexa off. A huge portion of the show's fandom was devastated by this. They announced their intention to stop watching the show, instead using a competing Twitter hashtag of LGBT fans deserve better. At the same time, over $100,000 for the Trevor Project have been raised in Lexa's name. Ricky Whittle was bullied. Another departure from the show that caused controversy was the demise of Ricky Whittle's character, Lincoln. Whittle slammed the handling of his character's death, as well as Lexa's, calling it weak storytelling. The star of American God stated that the showrunner Jason Rothenberg abused his power to make the actor's job untenable. Eventually, their relationship devolved to the point where they could no longer work together. However, regardless of his feud with Rothenberg, Riddy Whittle still considers The Hundred to be a great show that he remains proud of. But let's get back to the things we keep watching the series for. Bellark actually exists. Both of Clark's romantic relationships, Finn and Lexa, never existed in the books. However, the majority of fans want Clark and Bellamy to be romantically involved. There is definitely chemistry between these characters. They've been everything. Enemies, allies, partners, and friends who've been to hell and back together. Honestly, fans have every reason to expect Bellark to come true, because in the books, our faves are more than just in love. They're engaged. Jason Rothenberg has stated that this show has always been Clark and Bellamy's story, so we can definitely expect a happy ending for the duo in the seventh and final season of the series. But an even bigger question after the end of this wildly compelling show is, what's next? A spin-off show is in the works. 
The great news is that we don't have to say goodbye to the world of the 100. Last October, it was announced that the network has greenlit a backdoor pilot, and the episode is set to air during the show's seventh season. Jason Rothenberg later shared on Twitter that the title of the pilot episode is Anaconda, but the title of the new potential series has not been released yet. In the spin-off, the tumultuous period right after the nuclear war will be explored. The narrative will follow a band of survivors on the ground as they learn to cope in a dangerous world, while fighting to create a new and better society from the ashes of what came before. The first actors cast for the prequel pilot are Iola Evans, best known for Carnival Row, Aiden Bradley from Riverdale, and Leo Howard from Why Women Kill. Share your thoughts about Season 7 and the potential prequel of The 100 in the comments below. And thanks for staying with awesome movies!